Hey guys, it's Shadow. This video is going to be a brief overview of all the changes coming to the Mountain Royals DLC. Let's begin. Let's start off with the generic changes. These are going to be that Skirmishers and Genitals both get an increased damage against spear line units, making them a slightly harder counter. And Battle Elephants are going to have their speed increase from 0.85 to 0.88. Here's a big change that I'm excited for, it's the beginning of monk nerfs. So now, if you're trying to stop a castle going with a monk, it now takes one second before the villager starts to run away. This means that you can't just spam click with a monk to get to, uh, to like move the villagers back like you could before. Additionally, monks will no longer retain conversion charge uh, when switching between buildings and units. However, when switching between different units, they will still maintain their charge. I'll have a clip just above uh, showing what I mean by this based on the old and new behavior of monks. I think this is a good starting change to monks because they have been kind of overpowered for, for a very long time. I don't think this solves the issue where monks have just become so prevalent in high level games because this only really impacts redemption. Alright, but let's get into the bits that are a bit more exciting for this DLC. I'm going to start off with the new civilizations. So, the first new civilization is the Armenians. A quick overview of them is that they have cheaper mule carts. Uh, the mule cart is a building that replaces the lumber camp and mining camps, as well as allows drop-off of hunted food to the mule cart. It's a very interesting building that's also mobile. Uh, their technologies are more effective, which means things like double bit axe and uh, the mining upgrades are more effective than they'd usually be. Uh, the first fortified church receives a free relic, and that relic uh, spawns inside of the church straight away. The fortified church is a building that can be garrisoned to allow it to uh, fire arrows at nearby units. It's kind of similar to a town center, but uh, in the way that it doesn't fire arrows unless it's something garrisoned, and that it's not. Uh, particularly high damage, but it's still enough to sort of make your opponent think, oh, do I really want to dive underneath this town center, as well as the fortified church. Barracks units, except for the men at arms, are available one age earlier. So we can see here that you can make the longsword and pikeman in the feudal age, and uh, champion and halberdier in the castle age. This is very interesting. I don't know how it's going to end up playing out, but I am excited to see how it goes. And their gay line fires two projectiles. The second projectile does only get one additional damage, I believe. Um, but it's still a little bit of an increase in damage. And now we have the unique units. So they actually have two unique units. Their unique units being the composite bowman, which is an archer that ignores armor. This is really interesting because it means that the composite bowman beats things like huskals and does a huge amount of damage to things like paladin. However, they're very weak against Siege, they have low base damage, as you can see here they actually start with 4 base damage and do not increase beyond 4 base damage. I'm a little bit concerned as to how they might play out in team games, as against the Paladin they do 8 damage per shot rather than the Arbalest's usual 3. It'll definitely be fun to try them out though. And the second and arguably even more interesting uh, unique unit is the Warrior Priest. The Warrior Priest can heal friendly units uh, and can collect relics, but it cannot do conversions. It has a relatively high base damage at 11 damage. It is quite expensive at 30 food and 60 gold. Uh, and it's relatively tanky. Uh, which is in contrast to the composite bowman, which is quite squishy, but it is tanky against melee units. Warrior priests also receive bonus damage from monk counters, mainly the hussar. Uh, they have two unique technologies. So the two unique to technologies are Cilician Fleet, which means makes your demolition ships do a little bit of extra blast damage, a uh, blast radius, sorry. And the galley line and Romans receive an extra range, which is really interesting, meaning that they'll have, one, I think, the highest range uh, galleons in the game. And also, they have access to Dromans rather than the cannon galleon, which makes these ones uh, better than your generic ones, uh, such as civs like Huns and Goths have. Their other unique technology is that the Ferritor's uh, bonus gives 
infantry an extra 30 HP, and warrior priests heal a bit faster. This means that war uh, that warrior priests can get up to 125 HP, which is quite insane. And champions, I believe, go can go up to uh, is it? I think it's 100 uh, HP. Let me just double check that. I believe it's 100. Yeah, 100, which is kind of crazy to think about. Especially when you consider that Armenian infantry is fully upgraded. And the team bonus is that infantry have extra true line of sight. I'll quickly scroll through the tech tree so you can get a rough idea of what uh, they're weak and strong against. You can pause at any point during this scrolling. Uh, but the TLDR version is that they have very strong infantry, great economy, amazing naval units, relatively bad cavalry, which is rather surprising given the Armenian strength in antiquity, <laughs> and amazing monks. Now we go to the Georgians. So this, they are kind of similar to the Armenians in the sense that they have access to mule carts and fortified churches. They actually start with a little bit less food as they actually get a mule cart uh, at the beginning of the game. Mule carts by default cost 20 food and 100 wood. Um, fortified churches provide villages with additional uh, work rates. Units and buildings receive less damage when uh, fighting from a higher elevation, which is pretty cool. It just basically makes them kind of like an inverse Tatars, where Tatars are usually... Uh, do more damage from the hill. Georgians has received less damage from the hill. Cavalry regenerates a little bit of HP in Feudal, Castle, Imperial Age. 5 in Feudal, 10 in Castle, and 15 in Imperial Age. That unique unit is very interesting to me. It is a cavalry unit that gains more attack based on how many other Monospa or Knights are around them. I believe this caps out at plus 4 damage. They are a little bit on the squishy end though with lower HP and uh, lower pierce armor than a lot of their other a lot of other cavalry units. However, the elite upgrade does give them quite significant uh melee armor uh, at 5 melee armor. So fully upgraded they can get up to 8. When you combine this with the healing mechanics and one of the unique technologies, the Imperial Age unique technology, is the Asnuri Cavalry, which makes cavalry units take 15% less population space. You're going to be spamming a lot of uh, these monospers probably towards the later game. Uh, they're relatively cheap, they're pretty quick, and they do a lot of damage. And of course, they can heal. They will struggle against larger masses of archer units, though. The Castle Age unique technology is the Swan Towers. It makes it so defensive buildings receive plus two attack and towers fire arrows that pierce multiple units. I'll show a quick clip above of the uh, how this works. It doesn't actually look like a scorpion. I thought it was going to look like a scorpion, but the arrow just goes through multiple units. I think the projectile could be maybe a little bit more clear though for uh, quality purposes. And last but not least, the, this is something I'm a little bit concerned about, is that the buildings cost 50% fewer resources to repair. This is going to make castle wars really, really difficult against Georgians, or Georgians with any sort of their team mem like any of their team members in team games. They like think of, for example, a Frank castle in Imperial Age with a Georgian ally, they're going to be spending so little resources on repairing that castle compared to a generic Civ. It also makes things such as, unfortunately, Persian Jush in team games. All of a sudden, they're repairing less in the town center because they're Persians, and they're repairing less because they uh, have 50% fewer resources to repair. And it could also make it so other civs are able to do this strategy as well. I'll give you a quick scroll of the Georgian tech tree as well, but a very quick TLDR is that they have fully upgraded infantry, they have relatively good cavalry, their archers are decent as well, uh, they're quite a generalist civ, they don't have a great navy, they're lacking a couple of key uh, monk technologies for things like monk wars, but they are rel have relatively good monks as well. They're sort of a bit of everything civ, they don't really necessarily excel at any one thing. Uh, now we're going to go to, we're going to jump through this a little bit, uh, and go to the Persian rework. Uh, yes, I did just say rework, they've been teasing this for months. 
And I'll just go through the changes that have been made. So town centers and docks now work 5% faster in Dark Egg, as well as their previous bonus, which uh, worked during Feudal Castle and, and Imperial Age. This was actually given to them around when DE was released and then removed again. I'm a little bit shocked to see it make a return because it did make them kind of oppressive on maps like a, like Nomad. Like they were already pretty strong, but this was just the final nail in the coffin, uh, so to speak. Parthian Tactics is now available for Persians. It's actually available in the Castle Age. This, I think, is a great change because Persians were known for the Cavalry Archers in Antiquity. Uh, and you could basically never go Cavalry Archers with Persians. This now gives you an option to go for them. They do cap out very early as they still lack Bracer, but the Cavalry Archer will now have up to four Pierce Armor in Castle Age, uh, the same as a Knight, which can make them very strong against other Archer units. Uh, cavalry generate five gold when killing enemy military units, so you won't get any gold from killing villagers. I think this is an interesting change because the main units that you go for with Persians usually is Cavalry. And knights, for example, you almost always at least kill one military unit before dying, which means that they almost always have at least a five gold offset to making them, uh, if not more, especially when we're considering how cost efficient knights can be. Uh, they also, similar to the Hindu Sonics, can build the caravansary in the Imperial Age. Uh, which is the one that increases the movement speed of uh, trade carts in the trade line as well as healing them. I think this is interesting as well. Basically makes Persians a lot more resilient in low gold situations, especially in late game team games. Uh, but even in 1v1s, Hussar will now be able to generate a little bit of gold from killing military units. The unique text, uh, one of them has not been changed, that is still Commanderan. Arch liners replaced by additional wood cost. However, they did get a new unique technology in the form of citadels. I'll show a little clip of how this works, but castle fire bullets. They get an extra four attack, extra three damage versus rams, and extra three versus infantry, and receive 25% less bonus damage. Uh, this is kind of harping back a little bit to back towards boiling oil. Uh, which just gave him a pretty significant bonus to the first arrow against rams. However, this one now is essentially making the Persian castle one of the strongest, if not the strongest castle uh, to deal with in that sort of late game scenario. Minus 25% bonus damage is insane. Uh, trebuchets will be doing quite a significant less damage, especially if they are trying to fire uphill. You've got to be careful about letting Persians get the hill now. Uh, they actually have a new replacement for the Paladin. They have a unique Paladin replacement called the Savar. It is very strong against Archers as it starts with 4 Pierce Armor, and that when you have full upgrades it gets up to 8. Uh, it's slightly more melee armor than a Paladin, but slightly less HP. Uh, but it kind of is more of a reskin than anything else with a slightly cheaper upgrade cost. That's going to be the significant part about this. The, the upgrade cost is 1,000 food and 600 gold, rather than, I believe, 1,300 food and 750 gold uh, for the uh, Paladin upgrade. Now we go into the more standard generic changes. Uh, that should not take too long, but let's go through those. So first up, we have Celts. Very, very small change. They will now be receiving the final archer armor. The final archer armor just basically means that the scams are going to suck a little bit less. <laughs> they won't be really using anything else with the extra armor. Next up, we're going to look at the Japanese, which get a new bonus. Cavalry archers now get plus two attack against archers. I think that's pretty cool, as Japanese in the late game are relatively mediocre at the moment. And this basically gives them a unit that's both very good in team games in certain scenarios and a unit that's also pretty damn good in 1v1s. Next up, we have the Magyars. The Magyars have a relatively small change, but the Magyar Hussar now costs a lot more gold than it did before, but a lot less food by default. Karinvin army replaces the gold with the food cost. 
I think this is actually a pretty good change for the Magyar Hussar. It makes it more accessible as a unit you just add to your composition uh, in early sort of or mid castle age where you might have a bit of extra gold floating, but you very rarely have a significant amount of food. But then you can convince uh, convert it into a trash unit. And it also receives slightly extra HP in the castle age. The training time has also been reduced a little bit to make them a little more spammable. Holes have a relatively small change. They are losing access to the guild's technology, which will make them slightly worse in the super late game. Uh, the next one we have is the Romans. Romans, the Centurion aura effect for faster attacking militia line has been reduced slightly uh, from 25% faster attack speed to 20%. Uh, then we have the Saracens. Saracens actually received a few changes here. So the Camel units <laughs> HP changes has been changed quite a few times at this point. Uh, has been changed from plus 10 HP to Camel units now receive plus 25% HP. And to compensate for this, the Mameluke HP has been changed slightly. Uh, it has been made a little bit lower by default, but I believe it actually comes out roughly even with current DE. And the Zealotry Unique Technology has been completely removed, <clears throat> which I find a little bit surprising. It's been replaced by Biomartisan. Uh, Monk automatically heal nearby units. Uh, I'll show a little clip of how that works as well up above. I'm a little bit worried about this. I, I'm not a big fan of making Monk significantly stronger in any sort of way at the moment. And then to have this... Bonus, it makes it feel a little bit worrying in terms of how strong it could uh, potentially be, especially with multiple monks. And last, and certainly not least, the Slavs have been given back the Farmer's Work faster bonus. It used to be 15% back before uh, DE was released. When DE was released, it was reduced to 10, and then it's been put, pushed back up to 15% faster. Well, that does it for all the changes. I feel like what we're seeing here is that the devs are wanting to make each sim feel a little bit more unique. I don't necessarily dislike the direction they're going with it. I am a little bit worried about a couple of the things in terms of balance, but we'll have to see how that plays out in the coming weeks and months. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you again soon.